being diagnosed with MS can happen to anyone at any time. And you never really know. It happened to me when I was 15. I just woke up one morning and my whole body felt numb. I, my eyes started jumping and I, I didn't know what was going on. Uh, it took over a year to get diagnosed. So it, it can happen at any time. Emily has lived with MS in her life since she was two when Dean was diagnosed. So the children, all three of our children, have seen the MRI scans. And so we brought hers home on a, on a CD and popped it into the computer and she actually diagnosed herself. <laughs> she saw the lesions on the scan and knew that night before we had the official report. So, and it was more of a, well, now we know. And now let's just move forward. So she handled it very, very well. Emily handled it better than I did. Um, it's something that I had for, at the time, 12 years, and um, something that I'd been fighting for, volunteering for, um, to hope that my kids would never have to go through the same experience that I have. And it, uh, it was pretty heart-wrenching. And um, it was like, no. I felt like I wasn't doing enough. I hadn't done enough. And uh, I guess to me that's, that's why it's so important that we continue to do the research to raise the funds to get people out there that know more than the rest of us that can help other people and um, so that no other families have to go through this. Every day when I wake up, I have to make the decision of if I can make it to school that day. Uh, sometimes fatigue overcomes me and I'm not able to go to school. This year I've gone to about half of the days of school. Uh, difficulties come up for everybody with MS. A major thing is fatigue. So people are just way too tired and their, their whole body just feels exhausted. They don't really want to do anything because it's so tiring. After things had started to progress, I wanted to uh, be with a group of physicians that were more, more well-versed and specialized with multiple sclerosis. Um, so that's why I decided to go to the University of Minnesota. So I wanted to learn more about it myself, but I also wanted to work with somebody that knows more about MS and what the re research is out there and what kind of uh, things are coming up and, and what to hopefully expect for my future as well as for Emily. The University of Minnesota has been wonderful. There are a lot of great doctors there, a lot of, I, a lot of great therapists. Every, everyone that I met there has been absolutely fantastic. Pediatric MS is not very common, and so there are not a lot of doctors that will accept a pediatric patient, and we were very, very thrilled <laughs> that Dr. Carpenter would accept that, and um, he is a leading researcher that in, in the MS field, and we're just, we feel very blessed, very lucky. There are a lot of neurologists that are working on research for MS, um, currently, I am hoping it will come out soon, but currently I, I believe that there's a new medication that's an oral drug, that, so I won't have to give myself injections anymore, which will be fantastic. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to that, so I'm hoping I'll be able to get on that. But there's a lot of other research going on um, to try to find better medications and find, of course, find a cure for MS. I was the MS-150 ambassador in June, um, so I, I was able to do a lot of advocating for the MS Society and informing people about what MS is, and what it what it means to have MS, um, and what what they can do to help. At this moment, there isn't a cure, and so you have it for life. Um, so knowing <laughs> knowing what you can do to help with help people with MS, it's a big thing because it really does make a difference. I just want to say thank you everyone for your generosity. Um, you're giving us hope, you're giving the University of Minnesota the ability to research and find a cure and learn more about the disease and educate people and we can only hope for a cure. <laughs>